child, tuck yourself in bed, and let me tell a story of Lemuria, a long lost kingdom, and a girl born for glory. It's hard to ignore just how beautiful Child of Light is. For the first few minutes of the game, I just sat there gawking at the gorgeous watercolour-like landscapes, oblivious to the fact that there were in fact some neat ideas strewn amongst the pretty visuals. It is, after all, a marriage of two disparate genres, the 2D platformer and the turn-based RPG. However, Child of Light simplifies and condenses its many classic RPG mechanics to fit its shorter running time and make things a little more accessible. HP, MP, skill trees, weapon upgrades, buffs, spells and turn-based battles are all there, but are far less complex than in your average RPG. In the few hours I played the game, I'd already worked my way up to nearly level 20 and unlocked quite a few blocks on my character's skill tree. Still, I found Child of Light's rewards came not from an endless array of menu options, but from the combat itself. Their battles relied less on canny equipment choices and more on deft timing. Essentially, it was all about the balance between executing a defense command and launching an attack by way of a bar that showed when the characters, including enemies, were waiting to attack and when they were actively casting. If I launched an attack while an enemy was casting one of theirs, it would interrupt it and send them to the back of the wait bar. The reverse was true too, so if I attacked just as the enemy was getting to the end of a casting period, I'd have my attack nullified. Simple enough, but it got quite tactical as I timed my defence moves to the rhythm of the opposition's attacks, and began using slow to ensure my attacks were perfectly timed, while the enemy used haste to speed up their time to casting. It was a fun, tactical system, although once I got to grips with it, the battles themselves weren't particularly challenging. The potential is certainly there for it to come into its own during more difficult encounters, and I've got high hopes for it doing so later in the game. Even if it doesn't though, Child of Light's aesthetic qualities go a long way towards picking up the slack. A captivating soundtrack accompanies beautiful visuals, while a cast of cheeky fireflies, melancholy jesters and grumpy gnomes and their rhyming dialogue are utterly charming. That's not to mention the puzzle-filled platforming elements of the game and the fairy wings my character was gifted with that let me gracefully flutter through the dreamy watercolour landscapes. Child of Light is a game that's filled with charm and joyfulness. No matter how much I pondered about it having a deeper set of RPG mechanics, or battles with a more challenging set of opponents, I couldn't help but be utterly smitten by it. And if that happened after just a few hours, Lord knows what a mushy mess I'll be when I get my hands on the finished game. Can't wait. The Queen had vanished, and with her the light. Dark resided in its place. The usurper, Umbra, hid from sight. She sent her daughters in her stead. The sun, the stars, and the crescent moon, they pilfered from the sky, extinguished them with the monsoon. And Umbra's dark creatures conquered the land. Our lives soon snuffed out by a wave of her hand. 